Hello. Um, ne wawase wawate weabe equis. I am uh, the one who will see those northern lights. My understanding, um, those northern lights are a way that our ancestors communicate with us. Um, they will come and dance. They'll come and dance with us. My name gives me the, um, first of all, much dignity um, and, and gratitude, uh, but it also carries the responsibility. So when I say I am the one who sees those northern lights, that translation is, is very loose and it's not nuanced uh, because it is not within an indigenous language or knowledge system. But the short of it is that my responsibility is to understand what has happened seven generations before me. Uh, and not only to uh, those folks who are indigenous, First Nation, Métis or Inuit, um, or those global indigenous nations, um, but to those non-indigenous nations, understand how we arrived in this moment. So that's the responsibility I carry within communities. Um, I am Mi'kmaq uh, on my mother's side, so Northern New Brunswick, uh, Restigouche County, and I have relatives at Wupiganjig, Pokemon, uh, and Miguasha. Uh, on my father's side, I am Metis, uh, Selkirk Establishment, Red River, Manitoba. My understanding in that part of my identity uh, is that I am Sotu, uh, and Scottish, so Ojibwe, Cree, and some Scottish in there as well. Um, which sort of brings me to that space of identity uh, for Indigenous people or folks who are identifying that way, or perhaps not identifying. And there's reasons why people don't identify. Uh, and for those, those good people that are moving into that space of actively practicing um, in that helping profession. Uh, one of my suggestions would be to sort of understand um, why some folks may not identify still now in 2021. Um, is it a safety issue? Is it an expectation that they become your teacher or your mentor? Um, is it that they don't carry traditional bundles, that their way of being is different, that they have found different ceremonial cycles and different connections to the land, uh, and that all of those things are correct and they're good. Uh, one of the reasons that I bring that identity piece forward as well, um, and one of my asks would be to, to those who are stepping into that caring profession um, and, and going to be practicing, and that is so exciting, um, is to really um, become familiar with the interruptions, uh, those very deliberate interruptions into our family and community lines, a campaign that has uh, really um, taken away that, that complete sense of, of knowing who you are, and where your connections are. And to try to understand and find those spaces um, to learn about the campaign uh, against indigenous people, um, to create identity fractures within us, but also to create relationship fractures between indigenous and non-indigenous people. The reason that I bring this forward um, is that it can sometimes be very difficult, depending on which community you're in, uh, to not find members um, of that community uh, that are not experiencing that themselves or that a family member or community member is not experiencing that. Um, so I would ask of those, those new practitioners um, to sort of really dig into, you know, what has it looked like for Indigenous peoples? Um, one of the tools that I always recommend, uh, my, I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Hope and Healing, uh, Fostering Reconciliation in Canada. 
and I believe this was born a couple of years ago. Um, it really gives a lot of information about the residential school system uh, that we hear so much about. But why I absolutely love this resource, and it can be ordered online when we get to the middle of the book, it says why it matters. And this is the brilliance of this, this literature, because it's going to give you every legislative practice that has happened um, and all of sort of those very uh, systemic ways that um, Indigenous people have been erased. So this is um, really a must have. And it's a wonderful way to ask our, our, um, our relatives, our non-Indigenous relatives to dive in uh, and, and really help themselves understand and, and be able to begin to rebuild um, relationships personally. Uh, so it's one thing that I, I really would ask um, of those new practitioners. Uh, and again, looking at um, identity, and we've talked a little bit about those fractures and how they've happened. But then we hear the word indigeneity. That is a really layered word, and it's incredibly personal. Um, so when we talk about indigeneity, um, I don't think it's something that we should have an assumption or an opinion on as a non-Indigenous person uh, within practice. Uh, I think that that's the space where our new practitioners and those who are have been practicing for some time can begin to build relationships uh, within Indigenous communities and with Indigenous people. And when it comes to that space that uh, a client or a participant is ready to really um, find what their indigeneity is, uh, they're actually able to go home to find that. And it may not be their home territory or their home people, but you could possibly find a way to be a conduit between bringing those two things back together um, and possibly even, uh, I prefer to say rematriate as opposed to repatriate. Uh, so we can bring ourselves back to that space on Mother Earth, and we can bring ourselves back to that uh, matrilineal line where the knowledge is held. Um, so I think for now, uh, that's that piece that I wanted to share with you. Um, I thank you for all of the work that you've put into this to get to this space uh, of graduating and stepping into um, practicing and and we certainly do need you. Um, we certainly do need you. So be well and be safe. Um, chi miigwech, and my English name is Elaine Burwald, um, and I live and work and thrive uh, here in Niagara, Ontario.